God bless you. You be seated. I am sorry that we don't have a, another couple of weeks of this. I want to say that this has been one of the finest revivals or meetings that I have ever uh, had. It, it ranks a red letter to me, this meeting. I've never had a time in my life that I ever had any more liberty and felt any more freer just to preach the very conviction of my heart and what I have in this meeting. And it's been a wonderful time. We had a wonderful time at the Businessman's Fellowship and also a wonderful time down at Brother Sullivan's church this morning. And we've met so many fine people, and we sure appreciate all this. And we want to say to, if there happens to be some of the, the people that's present, and if not, you who tend to such, we want to... Thank the people and let us have this grounds, this Chautauqua. We appreciate that, my friends, and may it long stand for a purpose to serve the Lord. We appreciate it with all of our hearts. I want to thank Brother Sullivan, all the cooperating pastors, all you dear people for all that you have done for me, for the love offering, and all that you, they said, they taken up one a while ago, Brother Duplicis just told me. And I greet you all and thank you for myself, my wife, my son, Brother David Duplicis, Brother Sullivan, Gene Leo, all the whole staff. We certainly thank you very much. We cordially invite you that if any time that you have any troubles or anything that we could help you, while the night never gets too dark and the rain never falls too hard, you could call us. I used to say I could come to you. But there's so many now, I couldn't do it, because it runs into, well, I guess millions, not only just like here, but around the whole world, you see. And it makes it too hard. I, I can't say that. I'd love to do it, but I can't say it with all my heart, because I wouldn't be able to do it. But if you have a prayer request, just mail it to me anytime. Just William Branham, Jeffersonville, Indiana, you want post office 325, but you don't have to have that. It'll come anyhow. And we'll be glad to minister to you, send you prayer claws, any help, anything that we can. Absolutely free. Nothing, there's no charges to nothing. We got books, they sell them, and they belong to someone else. Brother Lindsay owns one of them, and Brother Judas Statscliffe owns the other. And we buy them at 40 cents less on the book than we have to pay for bringing them, pay for selling them, stand the loss. And you see what we are? It's always in the red, the books are. Every time we take an inventory on that, we're always behind. Because I've told the boys, all if they find any person that wants a book and they haven't got the money to pay for it, take it anyhow. Take the book anyhow. And I seen the first night when we started on books, the little old mother standing back there with fumbling in her pocketbook trying to get out 60 cents. She didn't have but 40. I watched the lady that was selling the books said, well, they are 60 cents. I walked right around, got her two or three, and gave them to her. See, so I uh, know what was that? My mother. And another thing, the books are not for commercial. They're to try to help somebody. The boy sells the tapes down there. And here some time ago, I checked up on the boys. Gene and Leo. Gene's my uh, tape boy. Leo is my field secretary. And they have records and tapes, and I checked those boys myself to see what price they're selling those tapes for, because I bought a tape from a, an evangelist that cost me around $6. Then they're getting $2 and something for them. So I seen what they paid for them, and they're just a barely a little margins all they make. And they get, I told them get the best tape they could get, and they use it on scotch tape. They have those tapes, any message or anything. And now, sometimes, I want to make this clear. Now, every man has his own idea. We have your own doctrine. When I'm out here in this interdenominational, I try to hold it to the great fundamental evangelical doctrines because of other ministering brothers. And I want the ministering brothers to know this. Sometimes in my own church, I preach my own convictions about things. In there, there's many people takes the tapes and sometimes they get out. 
Now, I would not want to push anything that I believed over on anybody, just a little something that I had in my own mind and thought it was this way. And if I didn't teach it the way I thought it, I'd be a hypocrite. So I just leave that part alone and go preach what I know that the rest of them agrees with, you see, and go on. But now, if you happen to get a hold of some of your members, brother, get a hold of a tape that come from my church upon something that you might not agree with me, please don't fall out with me about it. I'm your brother. I, I love you, and I, I don't mean for them to get out, but you can't help it when these 20 or 30 taking tapes and everything, you see. And so we try to curb it the very best we can. The church took it upon themselves, the foundation, to to uh, try to hold the boys alone when they're taking tapes on my meetings. And so uh, I am here to cooperate to make it one big body of Jesus Christ, that's all. Amen. And after all, the great fundamental part of it is repentance and baptism and faith towards God, salvation, divine healing. And I think all of us can agree upon that, Amen. see, upon those things. Now, the approach to it sometime, I might have a little different angle, but... I think like this one time, I was at my work at Jeffersonville, I was working for the public service company, and there was a, a Mr. Bohannon, the uh, superintendent, was a past master mason. I was a Baptist preacher, Reverend Arnie Clegg from the Maple Street Methodist Church come in, and then in come Father Halpin, the Catholic priest. Well, can I quote what he said? All right. He said, we should start a crap game. We're all here. Catholic priest said that. And so then he done something, old that, that started something rolling in my heart. He said on there, he drawed three lines. He said, here's the Pennsylvania going down. Billy, that was me, he said, well, go down on that line. And here's another one, the Southern, said, Mr. Clegg, here, I'll go down on that line. Here's another one over here. said, just stay on your line. If as long as you're pointing towards heaven, I thought that was pretty good for a priest. And he said, stay on your line. And that's right. As long as you're converted and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, just keep moving on with all your heart and he'll lead you in the light. I believe that with all in. All that's been so nice, the ladies with the music, the special singing, everything's been so fine. Then, I guess they can't hear me, but the police that's been helping us. Out there getting in and out, parking the cars. They've certainly done a wonderful job. Fine job. Everybody has been real fine, and we sure appreciate it. And it's our hopes and our prayers and our desires that we have did something or said something. Are you seeing God do something by us that will strengthen your faith and will make you love Jesus more? And if you're sick, that you'll get healed. Because that's our, our simple, heart, sincere desire, is that's what we're here for. And if we've achieved that by our coming, we're thanking God with all that's in our hearts. And now, if you ever down around Jeffersonville there, while the little tabernacle's at 8th and Penn Street, once in a while I'm in, have services there, or anywhere out in the meetings, let's meet together again and shake hands, and I hope to be here again next year, the Lord willing. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, how many of you will pray for me while I'm out in the fields? That, that's the main thing. God bless you. That's fine. You promise your prayers. And that's, that is my strength where I draw it from God is by the Holy Spirit. There's so many things I could say. Many of my friends from Jeffersonville is here and from different parts. The Downings are here from down in Tennessee. I've never seen them but waved at them. Brother Welch Evan and his wife and family is here somewhere. I couldn't find them now. Brother Banks Wood, his father and mother and brother and all are converted Jehovah Witnesses. And they're here in the, the meeting. And, um, oh, I hear that Brother Hickerson received the Holy Ghost last night. Oh, praise be to God. Him and his wife. Brother Collins, the Methodist preacher. His, he and his wife and his brother and... And uh, his wife all received the Holy Ghost. And oh, I tell you, things are just rolling on wonderfully. And we thank you, dear people, who was in the prayer rooms to help pray with these people. It means a lot to my church to be strengthened like that. Somebody told me that Brother Wood and them had received the Holy Ghost also, which was seeking for the baptism. I'm so thankful for that. May the Lord bless those brothers. I know there'll be a new something in their life. It'll be real. Amen. Now... 
We're going to pray for the sick. We don't want to keep you too long. We want you to go back to your church tonight. If you're visiting, uh, visit some of the churches. Brother David Duplessis just reported and said they had such a wonderful time at the place where they were at this morning. And I run over to Brother Sullivan's and we had a wonderful time over there with his congregation. This little brother here, I have, Brother Pat Tyler, is another one of my brothers and associates. Yeah. Brother Anthony from New York, a little... Um, are you Greek, brother, or uh, Italian? A little Italian church in New York. All around, so many, everywhere. I just couldn't call their names, but I... I trust that God will richly bless you. Now, everyone that's here that isn't healed, let this be the hour. Let this be the time. Now, last night, there was a group of wheelchairs along here, and I, I was so much under the discernment, I, I, I couldn't hardly see the congregation no more, and almost fell off the steps out there going out, and I kept feeling Billy or somebody hit me in the sides to leave. But I, there was a, a little um, colored baby that I was very interested in. It's here. I saw what had happened to the baby, a mistake of a doctor that did the, the damage from a shot. But um, uh, I believe that that child's going to be all right. That's right. And I, I was so far out, I couldn't hardly call no more. If people will never know until I meet you over in that land what that does to me. See? It, you, it's just hard, brother, sister. You don't under... Just think, Jesus of Nazareth, one woman touched his garment. He said that made him weak. Virtue went out of him. Is that right? Amen. And that was the Son of God. How about me, a sinner saved by grace? And stand here and sit time after time after time. The only way that is because he promised, the works that I do shall you also, more than this shall you do, for I go unto my Father. I know it says greater, but the right in translation from it is more. More than this shall you do, for I go to my Father. Now, before we read the Father's word, let us bow our heads for prayer. Our gracious and loving, honorable and Father, we come to thee just as humble as children could come. And we were giving our brethren and our friends thanks for all that they have did for us in this meeting. Now every one of us together with our heads and hearts bowed, we are thanking you, our loving Father, for your goodness. For it was through you that all this has been accomplished. The afflicted has been healed. The sick has been healed. Sinners have come to you to be saved. And those who are saved has come and been filled with your spirit. Thou hast not left one thing undone that we have preached. You have confirmed every word with signs following. And we thank thee for it, Father. And we know that it's your will to heal everybody and to save everybody and to fill everyone with the Holy Spirit. And we pray, Father, if there's any year that's left out, May they realize at this hour that it is not your will that they be left out of anything that they have need of, because you are here and willing and wanting and longing to give them the desire of their heart. For they are your children to whom you gave your life for, and you are ready and willing to help them. Bless the words that we read. And while we are speaking, let the blessed Holy Spirit take those words out across this audience and sink them down into every heart as they have need of. And when we are finished with the service this afternoon, or rather, when you are finished with the service this afternoon, and we return to our homes at different places and different towns and cities and states and even different nations, May we say like those who came from Emmaus that first Easter morning, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us along the way? And we'll always give thee the praise, Father, for we ask it in the name of thy loving Son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. 
And they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beast drink. May the Lord bless the words of his Bible. It must have been a, an awful hot morning. They had no sleep through the night. They had gathered at a little oasis. All night long the cattle bawled and the... the Horses nickered, and the children cried, and the people murmured, no water to drink. And they were out in a desert alone. And they'd searched through all the springs around the place, and all the springs that went dry, and there was no water. Their sin had brought them into this condition. They had forgotten all that God had did to them and did for them, and have went off to murmur against God and his prophet, and it had brought them out into this wilderness, where it was a desert, no water, nothing for their children, no food to eat, no water to drink. It's a horrible thing when people sin. A very striking type of today in the world. Then we find also that they had easily forgotten that the God that had promised them to take them to the land had been the God that gave all those signs and wonders and miracles. If we could stop, wish we could, but we can't. Pause on that for a few minutes. God makes a promise, then he confirms that he's going to fulfill that promise by keeping all of his words and showing himself present. How beautiful that God is doing the same thing right here at this Chautauqua. But you see, our, we are on our road to the promised land. God promised to supply all their needs from Egypt to the Promised Land. God promised to supply all our needs until we meet, reach the Promised Land. And there would not be any sickness among us if we'd kept God's promises. But we have sinned. What is sin? Disbelieved. Unbelief is the only sin there is. Drinking, smoking, gambling, committing adultery, that is not sin. That's the attributes of, of unbelief. See? Righteousness is the attributes of salvation. But people can quit smoking, drinking, and everything and still not be saved. See? So sin is a mark that the pe person that does it is not a believer. The Bible said, He that believeth not is condemned already. So before you, if you never lied, stole, or done anything in your life, you're still a sinner to begin with. You're, you don't have a chance outside of Christ. He is the way. And these people had got all together away from God, and he'd cut off their water supply and their food supply. And that's very similar of today, that God has cut off the great blessings from the church that he promised the church that he would be with them. Listen. He'd be with us, even in us, to the end of the way. Amen. The works that I do shall you do also. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'll be with thee always, even unto the consummation. All the way. Now, why isn't he in the church today that people talk? Where is that God of history, that God that rose up? 
He's only waiting for His people to come back to Him and get right. Then you'll see the God of history come in when the people gets right. How easy they had forgotten that when the plagues was in Egypt, that they were protected. When there was flies all over everything, there wasn't a fly around them. When lice filled all the beds, all the clothing, and everything, there wasn't one uh, bit of it on them. Frogs was in the cupboards and everything else, all over the rest of the unbelievers. But they had been protected. God showing His mercy. Notice, and when that final and great night came, God said, this is my final blow at Egypt. But before I can strike this blow, I've got to bring my children to protection. And there was a sacrificial lamb killed, and the blood was put on the post and the lintels of the door, and the congregation went under the blood. Remember, that was the last plague that struck Egypt, and the last plague that's striking the church today is the same as that was a spiritual death. Because as God led them, literally, He leads us spiritually. And the last blow at the, the enemy is death is striking, and all from under the blood is disfellowshipped by the Holy Spirit. Now, therefore, we have a spiritual death in the churches. That's the last sign before the hour of deliverance is a, spe- a spiritual death. Did not Jesus say the same thing? They'd be heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, despisers of those that are good, having a form of godliness, but would deny the power thereof from such turn away. The hour that we are now living, when the church world has become plagued and dying a spiritual death. But God protected them. And they had forgotten it. How quickly our Pentecostal believers are forgetting that too. That you were saved by His grace and filled with His Spirit in this great, tremendous, dying time to the church. Don't forget that, that the God that gave you the Holy Spirit to live by and to make this journey is with you every step of the way. We just so quickly forget it. It's too bad. Now, how that God brought them out. How that in that great night He passed over them. The great Passover. And how He had done these great things for them. Now, then how they had begun to grumble after they got out. They got out to the, to the Dead Sea. God opened up a way when there was no other way. Amen. God became their way. That's the way I found it in my life. When I get to a place where there is no way, then Jesus makes a way where there is no way to be made. Amen. I am the way. I am the truth and the light. Now, we find that God made a way when there was no way and delivered them. Now, I hope you got on your spiritual jackets. Listen. And the uncircumcised, meaning without the Holy Ghost, the uncircumcised, how many knows that the Holy Spirit is circumcision? Have you ever read your Bible, you know? Circum- Stephen said in my message this morning, told them, priests and them, you uncircumcised in the heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Ghost like your fathers did. The Holy Ghost circumcises the heart. And now, in the journey, God promised to take care of them, and He did take care of them. And He never fails. And then when the unbelievers tried to impersonate them, they was drowned. And you've seen yourself. People come in and try to impersonate or act like they got the Holy Ghost. 
We find out it isn't long till they're on the rubbish heap. That's right. Exactly right. You cannot impersonate it. It's got to be a genuine something you got yourself. You cannot come in and act like you're a Christian. You've got to be one. And the only way you can be one is by birth. We've heard people come in and speak with tongues. First thing you know, find them out you're on the rubbish heap. They didn't get the Holy Ghost. They got a confusion of language. They never, the Holy Spirit makes a man what he is from his heart. He has godly love. Now, they had forgotten all of this. And this, they left the great murmur with Moses and with God chatting. Why did you bring us out here? Why do we have to stay here? I'd rather be back down in Egypt anytime. Why did we die down there? Let Pharaoh kill us. Be better than being out here. If that isn't like the complaints of the church today, so easy they forget the hand of God. So easy they forgot it. Listen. What taking place? Oh, it's tremendous. We'd rather die down there. Look, those people had left from eating onions and garlics of Egypt, and God had rained bread down out of heaven, angels' food, and fed them with it. And they were still complaining. God has given the church angels' food, Holy Spirit, and they still complain about something all the time. Left onions and garlics to eat angels' food that angels prepared in heaven and rained down on the food that they had eaten. And still they were complaining. They had left the old muddy rivers of the Nile, drinking that old muddy water, and was drinking from a spiritual rock of pure salvation water, and was complaining about it. Yes, always complain because a little hard time struck them. Oh, that just as soon as you had your first trial. Come in the meeting. See the Holy Spirit. Go back out and have a tummy ache and say, well, maybe I never got healed. Shame on you. Sure you got healed if you believe it. Your feelings has nothing to do with it. It's your faith is what we look at. That's what God sees is your faith, not your feelings. Jesus never did say, did you feel it? He said, did you believe it? That's the idea. But they left the boasting physicians of Egypt down there saying, oh, we're the doctors. Days of miracles is past to be with the great physician. And 40 years journey, hundreds and thousands of little babies born, all kinds of sickness and old people, there wasn't a feeble one among them with that one great physician. Hallelujah. And still complaining. They had left the place down there where, the, where they said the days of miracles is past. That's where you left. You left those places that says the days of miracles are past. They left that to be with the out here where signs and wonders follow the believer. And still, they were complaining. Isn't that just like the people today? But instead of all that, in the face of all of that, when God seen the mercy for the people, Moses fell on his face, that prophet, and said, Lord God, sure they've sinned. But here they'll give them another chance. And what happened? God told him, rise up and go out yonder and speak to the rock. And it'll bring forth its waters. Now, if that wasn't, wouldn't the carnal mind pick that up as a foolishness? What would the carnal mind do? Why, certainly, the rock was the driest place in the wilderness. Well, if there's going to be any water, it would be in the spring, not up there on that rock. God does things just vice versa sometimes. Well, what man thinks is right. That's the reason man hasn't got a right to lead God's people. It takes the Holy Spirit to do it for a filled church. Certainly. Now, they say today, if there's any divine healing and miracles, it would be in our Catholic church, be in our Baptist, be in our Methodist. But God's able of these stones to rise up children to Abraham. What did he do? They went to the most unlikely place there could be, the rock. That's the way today they say, now, what kind of place is that healing going on at? Where them visions take place? It's a Pentecostal group. Ah, get away from there. If it's kind of anything like that, God give it, give it to our church. See? But that's what it is. What happened? Why wasn't there water? Because there's man-made springs that dried up. That's what's the matter today with the churches. Our man-made denominations and theology has dried up. But God still has the command to speak to the rock. And it will bring forth its water. Certainly. Yes. Very foolish to go up there. It looks very foolish. Why would a man leave a great big place to come down and get amongst a bunch of what they call holy rollers? What's he doing? 
He's only obeying the Word of God. That's what Moses did. He obeyed what God said to He spoke to the rock. Regardless of how foolish it sounded or anything else, He spoke to the rock. And the rock was to bring forth waters of life for them. Oh, the only thing we need to do today, is just like it was then, is speak to the rock. No matter if all the springs have dried up, if everything else is lost and gone, the only thing we have to do is still continue and speak to the rock. And the rock is still able to bring forth its waters. You believe that? Now, one time in the Bible, now we're having a little shower on the outside also. So just move in, give a little vent, press especially on this side where the rains are coming from and it won't hurt anything. I'll speak to the rock and the rock shall bring forth his waters. Did you notice it? It, I-T, it will bring forth his, personal pronoun, his waters. What kinds of waters? Waters of life. That's the kind it'll bring forth. God promised it, and God would do it. Now, that's what's the matter today. When you have gone as far as you can go, if you search through every doctor's office there is, and they still say there's nothing to be done for you, then I'll tell you, do like Moses did, speak to the rock. For it's still bringing forth its waters of salvation, divine healing, just as God promised. Only thing you have to do, if the doctor says no, speak to the rock, and it'll bring forth its waters. Now, Hannah, Hagar was turned out of her home. She had a little baby. The poor little fellow was dying. Why, she didn't know what to do with it. She didn't understand the, the treatment of her mistress. What happened? When they got this condition, her little baby's tongue, little Ishmael's tongue, was swelling out of him. She laid him under a bush and went out about a bow shop and fell down on her face and she spoke to the rock and the rock brought forth the waters and there was a spring, Bathsheba, which still stands today as an everlasting memorial that he still is God and you can speak to him and he'll bring forth whatever you have need of. Everything that he promised in the land. Sure. The Hebrew children want to stay true to God. One day, because if they were true to God, the federal government fined them. And they said they would throw them in the fiery furnace, which meant instant death. And when they started to throw them in the fiery furnace, they prayed all night, sought God. And as they threw them in the fiery furnace, they let them burn for about four or five hours. The king got wearied. He said, go open the door. And when they opened the door... They found the three Hebrew children sitting in there speaking to the rock that was able to deliver them from the fire and the furnace. They were speaking to the rock, and the rock had smothered the fire. Joshua, one day he was bothered. God had led him across the sea, and we are across the Jordan River. How was he going to take this land? How was he going to take Jericho? He was walking around one afternoon trying to figure out a way that he could descend the walls or something. After a while, he saw a man standing there. He pulled his sword and went to meet him. The man pulled his sword and come to meet him. He said, are you for us? Are you for our enemies? He said, I am the captain of the host of the Lord. Joshua spoke to the rock and the walls fell down. As long as we'll speak to the rock. There will be a way made. Blind Barnabas, hundreds of years later, was sitting. Now look, hundreds and hundreds of years later, an old blind man sat by the wall, dreaming of the days when Joshua shut the walls down with the power of God, sitting there in his blindness. And he said, oh, if I could only live in that day, I would have seen him also. And less than a few minutes from then, old blind Barnabas without hope, without any medical cure, Without anything, he spoke to the rock, and the rock gave him back his sight. When Jesus of Nazareth, which is the rock of the weary land, he spoke to him, and he gave him back his sight. The woman at the well, she came up there one day to get a drink of water. Her life was condemning her. She wanted some water, and she drawed down to get it. 
somebody sitting there said, why don't you ask me for a drink? I'd give you waters you don't come here to draw. And she said, Lord, give me this water forevermore. She spoke to the rock. And when she got a drink of that water, she ran into the city saying, come see a man who told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the very Messiah? Sure, she was thirsty. And she spoke to the rock. Martha, the sister of Lazarus, one day when sickness had come to their home, death had come to their home. Her brother was dead, buried, stinking out in the grave. But she went out into the city for she heard something. Faith cometh by hearing. And when she got down there, she spoke to the rock. And the rock brought forth life again to her dead brother because she spoke to the rock. And the rock gave back the life of the dead boy. The disciples one night in a storm twice as horrible as this was out on the raging sea. And all hopes is gone. They thought they'd be gone. But they happened to remember they had the rock on board. They spoke to the rock. And the rock gave forth its eternal life waters. And he spoke to the winds and the waves. And they obeyed him. They just had to speak to the rock. If you need joy, speak to the rock. If you need salvation, speak to the rock. If you need divine healing, speak to the rock. If you need the Holy Ghost, speak to the rock. And he'll bring forth his waters, the waters of salvation. If you'll just speak to the rock. Anything you have need of, speak to the rock. The rock is just the same today as he ever was. He's still got eternal life. He's still got eternal peace. He's still got joy unspeakable and full of glory. He's still got divine healing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The only thing that people need to do is speak to the rock. Amen. You believe that? Let's bow our heads and speak to the rock. Everybody in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come in the name of the rock. The rock in a weary land. The shelter in the time of storm. We pray, O Lord God, that the rock will overshadow us with his power and mercy. That it ever sick person in here may be healed today. May they speak to the rock. There are men and women sitting here suffering with cancer. Some of them blind, some crippled. The doctor says there's no hope for them. Then let them speak to the rock. Moses without hope. They was in the wilderness where no water was. But they spoke to the rock. And the rock gave forth a gusher. And they all drink and they live. Lord God, may we drink from that fountain today that never runs dry. Oh, in this beautiful land of salvation where we've been called out of Egypt's garlics and stink pots into this great wonderful place where it's beautiful land where the rock lays, eating angels' food and drinking from a fountain that never runs dry. God in heaven, grant this blessing to the people. May they see today that the rock still lives, the rock resurrected from the dead, the rock is in the land today. He's a shelter in the time of storm. And may the people run into it and are safe. Grant it, Lord. Hear the prayers of your servants as we pray and call upon you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, my. Speak to the rock. If you're sick, speak to the rock. If the doctor says, I can't do no more for you, then speak to the rock. If the church says, if you shout in my church, I'll turn you out, then speak to the rock. If the denomination wants to excommunicate you, speak to the rock. When death comes stealing in your room, speak to the rock. He'll make a way and divide the waters of Jordan as he did for them and you'll walk over on dry land. Speak to the rock. That's all you have to do. You don't have to smite it no more, just speak to it. Just call on his name. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, that I'll do. Amen. Speak to the rock. And it'll bring forth its waters. Speak to it. Look at others speaking to it. You without the Holy Ghost, look at them who spoke to it. Methodist, Jehovah Witness, Baptist, all such. Speak to the rock. The rock's no respecter of person, no respect of time. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever and will evermore be the same rock. 
that promise to supply all we have need of from here to the promised land. Amen. You believe that? Amen. You give out prayer cards? Huh? Billy said to give out prayer cards. All right. Let's find out. If you sick people, you come this afternoon. Come doing this in condition to speak to the rock. I'm not the rock. I'm just his outlet. <laughs> See? Our ministries are just outlets. Where the, it's a pipe where the water flows through. Don't glorify the pipe. Glorify the water that you're getting out of the pipe. For the water comes from the fountain. Glorify the water. Then, remember, it couldn't be me that healed. The pipe doesn't give you a drink. The stem that comes through, it doesn't give the drink. It only supplies the water. You drink from that rock, that smitten rock that's already been smoked. Moses smoked that rock with the judgment rod of God. And the judgments of God smoked the rock Christ Jesus. And when Moses smoked the rock, there was a cleft in the rock. Always was a cleft in that rock from that time forth. And when Christ was smitten, there was a cleft in the rock. Out of that rock they found honey when they were hungry. They found water when they were thirsty. For it was a smitten rock. That same rock today has water and honey and abundance of life, joy unspeakable, full of glory, divine healing powers of God to set a man free from sin. Speak to the rock. And it will bring forth His waters. <laughs> Amen. All right. Those who have prayer cards, what was it? See? One to fifty. Line up over here on this side. Oh, I, I feel like talking to the rock, don't you? I'm so glad that there is a rock. Huh? See? A lady there said, is that right? Let's see. Yeah. See. All right. See? One to fifty. Oh, speak to the rock. Oh, I heard a fellow singing a song the other night. I'm looking for a rock that is higher than I. That's the rock we're wanting to see. Now remember, you say if I could only speak to the rock, the rock talks himself. I wish I was bigger than I am. The rock speaks for himself. How many believe that? The rock is not dumb. This rock is a living rock. A lively stone you are. Fit it up together with this rock to make a shelter. Speak to the rock, and the rock shall bring forth his waters. Thanks be to the living God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I love him. Now, while they're making ready, how many here that doesn't have a prayer card and you want to speak to the rock? <laughs> oh my, that's fine. Now the rock just ain't only in this prayer line. The rock covers it all. <laughs> Let us sing now a good song. I love him, if you will, sister. Give us the card while we're waiting for him to get the people so they won't be jammed up against one another. Kind of lined out in the line. Let's sing now with all of our heart now. I love him. I love him because he first loved me and purchased my salvation on Let's raise your hands. that, don't you?
wonderful, glorious. Now, let's have a little word of prayer to you. Just continue on. Oh, God, our Heavenly Father, when the anointing of Thy Holy Spirit gets upon us, then we seem to forget that we're still earthly. There seems to be a deeper sense of, of something more real. It makes us cry and shout and great strange things that we do that's hard to understand by the carnal mind. But we have spoke to the rock. It's very strange to think that, that the rock would bring forth water, but there was waters there somewhere. To follow the commandments of God always brings forth the results. And we thank Thee for this, our Father. And we pray now that as we closing out this revival and service, that there will not be one person here, but what will receive all that they have come for. If it's for salvation, may they accept You as their personal Savior. If they have not yet been born again, filled with the Spirit, we pray that they will be filled with Thy Spirit. If it's healing, may there not be a feeble person in our midst at the close of this service. Bless them, Lord. They've come. They've sat around. They've waited. And, Lord, I don't know what more we could do. Preaching, telling them the truth, reading it from the Scriptures, giving them parables. Then, above all that, you come right down in our midst and prove that you're here. May they have faith to speak to you this afternoon and say, Lord, heal me. Save me, fill me with thy spirit. Grant it, Lord. We commit them all into your hands now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now as we settle and whiten ourselves, this great sacred moment that we're now facing. Here's where all the preaching that I have done and everything else will either be found right or wrong. Now, if the rock only lived in the wilderness, and it is the same rock today, then it won't, it won't speak. But if it is the same rock, he'll speak by the same word. Is that right? Sure he is. He said, our father's uh, eating the wilderness bread, he said, but I'm the bread of life that come from God out of heaven. Man eats this and never dies. Yeah, he said well, about Moses, and, and they told them, he told them before Moses was, he was. And he's the same great rock. When he was shared in the world, in a body of flesh, dwelt in one man, his son Christ. We see what he did in them days. He never done nothing to he saw a vision on what to do. No one, he said himself. How many of the people are aware that Jesus said he did nothing till he saw it first being done? If you want to read it, St. John 5.24, or 5.19, beg your pardon. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. Now that's either right or wrong. If it's right, he never performed one miracle or done one thing until God showed him by a vision first what to do. That's what he said, or he told something wrong. He couldn't do that and remain the Son of God. Now, I know it's going to be a little hard for you to hear. Now, that's the engineers, whatever they are. Uh, just step up that microphone just as hard as they can. Because under vision, you don't know what you're saying. You don't even know where you're at. So then, here it is. Now, is there anybody here that never went in one of the meetings before? Let's see your hand. I guess you're all about, about one or two. Now, if Jesus Christ remains the same yesterday, today, and forever, in the book of St. John, he met a woman. Him being a man, he met a woman. The woman at the well that I preached about a few minutes ago. And he asked her for a drink, and he carried a conversation with her. After a while, he found what her trouble was. How many knows what it was? Sure, she's living in adultery. He said, go get your husband. She said, I have none. He said, you said, right, because you've got five. And the one you're living with is not your husband. Now the Pharisees heard him do that and seen him do it, that same rock. And they said, this man is Beelzebub, a devil. Is that right? Some kind of a mystic fortune teller or something. Jesus said, I'll forgive you for that. But someday, words like this, 
When the Holy Ghost comes to do the same thing, you speak one word against it, it'll never be forgiven. How many knows that's true? This world are in the world to come. Because they call the Spirit of God an unclean spirit, like a devil spirit, fortune teller. Anybody knows that fortune telling's of the devil? Certainly all them witchcraft and fortune tellers and mental telepathy and all that kind of stuff like that comes from the devil. But remember, Jesus said in the last days when we got all this year positive thinking about different ones and mental telepathy and, and uh, that other stuff they tried to accuse, what was it, um, superstition, perception, and all that, that's of the devil. And the Bible said it would be here as Jambres and Jambres withstood Moses, so will these resist the truth. The truth is the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the power of God. Jesus said to be so close together it would deceive the very elected if it was possible. But the, it's not possible to deceive the elected because they were elected before the foundation of the world. Their names are put on the Lamb's book of life. Those who he foreknew, he's called. Those who he called, he justified. Those who he justified, he has already glorified. That's right. Now, here's a woman. I've never seen her. As far as I know, I guess we're strangers. All right. Here's a lady. I've never seen. She's probably around my age. Maybe I'm a little older than her. But we've never seen one another. And this is our first time seeing each other. Now, if Jesus Christ remains the same as promised that he would show the Gentiles. I'll say it like that so if you want me to explain it, I could, but I'm sure you understand it. He promised that he would show the Gentiles, just like he did the Jews and Samaritans, at the end of the Gentile age, he would show the Gentiles. How many knows that? The same sign that he was a resurrected Messiah, as it was in the days of Sodom, when the Lord Jesus was there, God manifested in flesh, told Abraham who his wife was, what her name was. She is in the tent behind him. And he told him he's going to have a baby by her. And she laughed. He said, why did she laugh? Now, Jesus said that same thing will take place just before he comes. We're at the end of the road. Now, if he's still the same Messiah, he'll do the same Messiah signs to prove himself. I'm not him. I'm just your brother. I'm well, just like you, one that's received his spirit. Now, if the woman didn't believe, no matter what was said, it'd never help her anyhow. And she's got to believe before anything will take place. Now, you out there in the audience, you just believe the same way for yourself or for somebody else. No matter what it is, you just believe for them and find out if it doesn't take place just exactly the same. Now, come this way just a minute, ladies. Now, here we are. I just want you to get this. This is our first time meeting in life. I do not know you. But God does know you. Now, I just spoke that that rock is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You believe that? Yes, sir. You are Christian. The feeling of your spirit tells me you're a Christian. If it wasn't, you're far back. Now, I have no idea what you're here for. You may be for somebody else. You may be for finances. You may be for domestic trouble. You may be sick. You, you may have uh, some heartache or something. I don't know. But you have come to me as God's servant to try to speak through like uh, they did in the Old Testament, through the prophets to find out what was what and so forth. Is that right? What was going to happen? Well, then, if he still remains the same as he was, then his spirit is in us and will do just like he, he did then. Is that right? How many of the audience will believe it now with all your heart? All right. The only thing I ask, just look this away. Don't die. You believe me to be his servant? That's good. And if we've never met, and there's something wrong with you, God would have to tell me, or have to have some kind of a power that would tell me, because there's no way for me to know. And then through that, if it would tell you, it would help you, would it? Amen. It would help you. Amen. Well, you are here for healing. And that's in your stomach. You got a stomach trouble, complications, and a lot of things wrong with you. That's exactly right. Amen. Now, if that's true, raise up your hand. Amen. Now, do you believe? Amen. See how exact the Holy Spirit is? Now, that's true. Now, if you... Wait, there's something else. She's got something else on her mind. She's thinking of something. Did Jesus perceive the thought? That's right. That's how I picked that up just then. She's got something else on her mind. That's exactly right. That's your husband. <laughs> he's sick. He's here. He needs healing too, does he? You're not from here. You're Canadian. Go back home. Take that handkerchief. You put that tear off. Both of you will get well. Go believe with all your heart. In the name of the Lord. 
to just get healed. Now remember, I could not do that. I could not do that to more than nothing. It's God. See, you're, you're afraid of God's somewhere. God's right here. He's right around you. Just speak to him. He's a rock. Now, I guess we change this one or nothing. Now, if you take this line like that, I've just got to hurry to see here. You know, that's it. Just have faith, don't doubt. Believe with all your heart. Now, you're, I suppose you're older than me, but we don't know one another. God knows the soul. And if he will tell me what's wrong with you or something in his heart or something on that order, if he tells you what has been, you know whether that's right or not, then you can know what will be. Is that right? Is that fair, congregation? Yes. Now, let's get two or three so the Bible said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And then we'll start just praying for the sick as they go along. Do you see the Holy Spirit's present? Now, I don't know you. I've never seen you in my life. But God does know you. But if you'll tell me what your trouble is, you'll know whether it's right or not. You're suffering with a kidney condition. That's right. It's kidneys. That's right. And another thing, you have a growth you're praying about. That's right. You believe God can tell me where the growth is? Would it help you? It's on your right side. That's right, isn't it? Uh -huh. You're not from here either. You're from the mountain country, like Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Your name is Miss Colt. Go back home and be healed. Now, how do you like that? Is that, is that you All right. Just have faith if you believe. Just believe. Have faith in God. All right? We're strangers, one another, I suppose. Now, here's a man. Now, let's see something. Now, that same Son of God is not dead. He's a living here this afternoon. Now, may God help us. I don't know. He might not say nothing to the man. I've never seen him. I don't know that he will. But I hope he will. I think, what is this, two or three? Three. And this man be three. All right, two women, this man be three, a confirmation. All right. Sir, God knows all about you. I do not. But if he can tell me something that you know that I do not know, would it help your faith? Would it help every man out there to believe it now? Every one of you, man? Your trouble's in your throat. It's esophagus. You've been to doctors. They want you to be operated on for it. That's it. That's what's wrong with him. That's what happened before he come to the church. You believe? Yes, sir. I just happened to notice another thing while I was feeling your spirit. You've never been satisfied with an experience as a Christian yet, fully surrendered to God. You need Jesus as your Savior. That's right. Will you accept Him right now as your personal Savior? You give your life to Him? I see you can't eat, can't swallow right. That's right. You're just windling away, going away. That's true. That's been coming on for quite a while. It's bothering you to throw. You're not from here. You're from Cincinnati, Ohio. You believe God knows who you are? If I'll tell you who you are, but the Holy Spirit will help you, John Huff, go on back home and get well. Jesus Christ, make you well. You believe with all your heart? That little man sitting right down there wanting to quit smoking cigarettes. You believe God will give you your desire, sir? All right. You won't smoke no more. Jesus Christ, makes you well. You don't have a prayer card, do you? No, you ain't got a prayer card. You don't need it. You have faith in God, you believe? That young woman sitting right back there praying for a friend in Pennsylvania. That's right. You don't have a prayer card, do you? But you're praying for a friend that's in Pennsylvania. I've seen them roving hills. Believe with all your heart and you'll get well. It's one of your loved ones. Believe with all your heart. You'll get well. Do you believe with all your heart? If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Hallelujah. You believe it? The little lady sitting back there praying, she's got Vericois veins, the first thing, and she's praying for her husband. He both smokes and drinks. Now, you ain't got a prayer card, have you, lady? But she was praying for God to help you. Is that right? You receive your healing. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for the rest of it. Have faith in God, don't doubt. I challenge you to believe him. Amen. If I don't say one word, just lay hands on you. Believe you get well? In the name of Jesus Christ, go and be healed. If I tell you what's wrong with you, will you be healed? Your heart trouble's cured. Go and be well. Believe with all your heart. If I don't say nothing, will you believe with all your heart? Come here. In the name of Jesus, go and be made well. 
Have faith. Do you all believe that? Is everybody praying? These signs shall follow them that believe. People with prayer cards, people without prayer cards in the audience, wherever you are, have faith in God. Speak to the rock. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may our brother be healed. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may my sister be healed. There's something here that's telling me these things. You believe your female troubles left? Go on on your own and say, thanks the Lord. Praise the Lord. You believe your nervousness left you? Go on your own and be praise the Lord. You believe with all your heart now? Have faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our brother be healed. I have faith. Just believe with all your heart. God bless the little one and heal in Jesus' name. Come, little boy. You believe now? The Lord Jesus, heal you, my son, and make you well. Amen. Come, sister dear. Lord, come right on. You believe now with all your heart you're going to get healed? In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. I'm believing now, don't doubt. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Amen. Come, my brother dear. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may this devil depart from you and you're going to be made well. God bless this little one too. In Jesus' name, I pray. Put your daughter anywhere to see this. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Amen. Don't believe me. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Amen. I'm believing. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may she be healed. Is everybody praying? Everybody on prayer grounds? Right. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Grant it, Lord. Come, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the woman be healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. That's the way, sister. That's it. That's the kind of faith it takes to get the blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be healed. Amen. Come, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, may be healed. Come, sister, believe with all your heart, and you'll get it. In the name of Jesus Christ, don't doubt. Same as Barnabas was at the gate. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Come, sister, dear. Don't doubt. I believe it will happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Come, brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Wait just a minute. That's okay. I, I thought something. Are you, you believe? All of you believe with all your heart? Everybody believing? Now look, see, if the anointing sheer, the people passing over, that's just laying hands on them just exactly the way it always is. The same spirit here. That's all. You don't have to tell people. Here. This is, I believe, it's the first colored person we've had on the platform today. I believe, as far as I know. All right, look. One day in Jerusalem, there was an old rugged cross going, dragging down the street. Dragging out the bloody footprints of the barrier. And Simon, Sreen, helped him bear the cross when he fell under that load. He was an Ethiopian, where your people originated at. He still remembers that. You believe that same Jesus lives today and he could tell me what your trouble is? You believe that? Happens to be that you're not here for yourself. You got healed last night. You want to tell you what you had? You had stomach trouble and, and diabetes. That's what you got healed by. Another thing, you're here for your daughter. And your daughter has stomach trouble. Your name is Mrs. Wells. And you can go on your road home and be made well. In the name of the Lord Jesus. All right? Come believe me. Don't doubt. Have faith. Lord, in Jesus' name, heal the woman and make her well. Amen. God, in the name of Jesus, heal my brother and make him well. Amen. Just remember the anointing of the Holy Spirit still here. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal our sister and make her well. Amen. Father in heaven, I pray that you'll heal our sister and make her well. Come, brother. You believe with all your heart? That old back's going to be all right. Now just warm, believe God with all your heart and you make well. All right. Come. Now, you don't look like you have it, but you have this arthritis. But you believe that God will make you well? All right, sir. You can have it if you believe. All right, go on your own rejoice and say thank you. This man shattered to death. Cancer. You believe God can heal that cancer, sir? All that's out there suffering with cancer, stand on your feet. Everybody's got cancer in the building, stand on your feet. Don't you dare to get up. You've already been healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you love him? This lady sitting here praying for her husband. He's got eye trouble and unsaved. You believe God will fix him, cure his eyes, and make him well? All right. 
God bless you. May the Holy Spirit come upon him and save him from a life of sin. Right behind you there, you're praying for a friend that's in the hospital dying. That young lady, you believe, with all your heart? All right. See, you all don't have prayer cards. You don't need them. If you'll believe, God will stay the hand of death. I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit's here. Amen. God bless you, brother. You see what that is? If I could heal you, I'd do it. I can't do it. But I believe that God will hear my prayer, don't you? Then I cast away that evil devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be made well. Dear sister, I don't know you. There's so many pulling out there now. It's just got me so weak, I hardly know where to stand. You're suffering with a lady's trouble, female trouble. Stand right here just a minute. Every woman out there that's suffering with that female disorder, stand to your feet. Right now, stand up for prayer just a minute. All right? Here, you had the same thing, lady, so you stand right over here and you believe with all your heart. All right, look here, sister, just a minute. Your stomach trouble. Stand right over on this side. Everybody's stomach trouble, stand up. Have faith, don't doubt. Amen. Young fellow, look this way. Your back trouble. Stand right over here. Everybody's got back trouble. Stand on your feet. Have faith in God. Your stomach, like, stand right over on this side. Have faith in God, believe. Right over here also. Nervousness, all right. All's got nervous trouble. Stand up on your feet. Everybody's father with nervous trouble. Stand up. All right. Come along now. Let's see who, this next one. Asthmatic condition. All's got asthma. Stand up on your feet. Everyone stand to your feet. You're going to see the glory of God. Come on. Stomach trouble and nervousness. Stand over on this side. All right. There you are. How could I call all of those? But the Holy Spirit knows all about you. Amen. How many's got any kind of sickness? Stand on your feet. I don't care what it is. It's got any kind of sickness. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. Are you ready to speak to the rock? Now you go and believe. And you go and believe. Stand on your feet and now raise your hands up to God. All of us. I command the devil in the name of Jesus Christ, our rock of salvation, to depart from every sick and afflicted person in here. I do this by the blood of Jesus Christ, under the atonement, by the ministry of an angel that sent me to do these signs and wonders before you, to speak of the coming of Jesus Christ. O oh God of heaven, creator of all good things, send thy blessings upon the people while I condemn the power of the devil that's bound them. These people on the platform, those in the audience, may the devil lead them. May every shadow of unbelief go now. May they speak to the rock right now about their case. And may the rock pour forth his healing powers and glory into their bodies and souls and heal them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to God. Amen.